So I just saw Searching and it's not very good. This is a movie that I had some expectations for because it had a lot of good reviews. Uh, the, the general vibe of the movie was quite positive. A lot of people seemed to have liked this movie a lot. The early screenings, it did very well. There's some buzz around this movie. So I went into it with some expectations. The trailers made it out to be sort of Unfriended-esque where the whole movie takes place on a laptop screen. Hey, Dad. Hey, sweetheart. Where are you? Study group. I'm gonna go all night. Oh, one more thing. I want to know Dad. about the final you... And from hearing the reviews, I was expecting it to be, like, exponentially better than Unfriended. Like, Unfriended done right. And while it is, it also very much isn't. The actual gimmick, where most of it takes place on a computer screen, is quite a bit better than Unfriended, where that movie, it has to take place in a set amount of time. The whole movie takes place as if it was one take, where the hour and a half events of the movie happen in that time. So they essentially have to wrap this story around a specific amount of time and try to cut everything together to make it work and so that everyone understands what's happening. And here, they don't really have that problem because most of the movie is actually pretty traditional in a way. Most of it is definitely still on a screen, but they cut into things, they pan up to things. It's more of traditional filmmaking, and you can kind of tell how much effort they went through to make this gimmick work as opposed to Unfriended, where Unfriended has these blaringly obvious, awful mistakes in it. And then it will cut to them on the big frame so that you can see them talking. But when it searching doesn't have those mistakes as much, not nearly as much, and they actually kind of go out of their way to make these fake YouTube videos, fake um, streaming videos, fake news footage, all this stuff. They go out of their way to really actually kind of make it work as best as they possibly can, and I respect that. And I would say that John Cho, the leading man of the movie, is excellent. I think his performance is really, really good. He seems to fully commit to this movie, and he really gives it a good energy. And I really liked every time he was on screen. The movie is elevated whenever he was on screen. But that's it. That's all I liked. Everything else is not very good. The rest of the movie is acceptable to subpar to pretty bad. And the first thing that I want to talk about is the actual story here. But as a parent, you can help us with who your daughter talks to. Is that something you can do? Yes. So the story basically goes as follows. We watch this family, John Cho, his daughter and his wife at the very start. And they, you kind of see in the montage, the, the family grow up and Margot, the daughter, go from being a little baby to a high schooler. And as time progresses, the mom uh, gets cancer and dies. And then from there, you jump into the real movie where John Cho is just an average everyday dad reprimanding his kids for not taking the trash out. And then Margot doesn't come home and they have to try and find her. They have to searching for her, if you will. Yeah! Basically the plot twist of the movie is that the detective lady assigned to John Cho's case is covering up for her son who accidentally pushed Margot off a ravine and the detective's trying to cover it up for him. So the whole movie is basically just her trying to lead John Cho off of the case while he's furiously trying to figure it all out. So by the end, when you figure this out, when the movie literally just explains it to you, you kind of look back at the rest of the movie and realize that nothing really makes that much sense. Do you mind answering some questions for me to help? Did Sierra eat lunch alone? On Thursday? Every day. You don't think he's involved with anything serious? I know my daughter. We're not really that close. She has friends, right? Kind of. The movie banks on so many, like, very convenient things to happen to throw the audience off the scent, where the main character, John Cho, I don't even know his real character because there are no characters. The characters in this are non-existent. They're, they're, they just suck. All the characters are very poorly written. Um, he 
gets onto his daughter's laptop and he's going through Facebook, her Facebook, to try and get any inf information he can about her whereabouts or where she was last seen. And he's going through this big list. There's like 200 people that he's calling and it's showing this in a montage where he's calling all these people and writing down their information and where they saw her last or whatever they remember about her. And he's going through all this stuff and then later in the movie, it's revealed that his brother was doing something with her and they were texting back and forth. Did he not read texts? Did our main character willfully ignore her text messages while he was going through Facebook profiles and calling people and making a large spreadsheet of everything that's happening? Was he just not reading her texts? I don't get it. The texts you, you don't even have to log into if you're on a Mac. You just open up iMessages and just read them. That's probably the first thing I would do. What? Did he just ignore that? That's like a piece of evidence in uh, against his brother that he could have used or could have found out earlier. But it's just this red herring that happens in the movie that is completely abandoned after it happens. So it's like, he goes to the house and he's like, what'd you do with my daughter, brother? How can you call yourself my brother when, when you're doing this stuff with my daughter? And his brother's like, oh, we are just doing weed and getting high. And he's like, oh, so you didn't kill her. And he's like, no. And then his brother doesn't show up for the rest of the movie. What's the point of having that? What's the point of even revealing that his brother was hanging out with her? It goes nowhere. Almost everything in this movie just goes nowhere. And there are other things where, like, the detective will say something and he just doesn't follow up on it at all. Like, he, he follows up on so many different things, except very specific things that would lead him to believe that she was covering up something. There's so many little things like that that are just obvious plot devices that the movie s says, Ooh, let's hope they don't think about that, because if they think about it, then it doesn't make any sense. Not only is that stupid, but the detective basically just tells you exactly what she did. Pretty much straight to the audience. Um, you see surveillance footage somehow inside a police station, somehow, of a homicide detective interviewing this detective, and she's just explaining beat for beat her entire plot and everything that she did to this detective. It, she's just explaining this for like 10 minutes straight. And I was like, this is the dumbest thing. It's just telling the audience exactly what happened. There's nothing left open for you to think about. And the whole movie is like this. The whole movie is filled with these plot devices. It's filled with so much hand-holding or everything that's important that you need to see. The movie just cuts in incredibly close to it so that you are forced to see it happen. And the mouse even sometimes will just highlight things. So you are literally forced to look at this important thing that's happening, as opposed to noticing it or having, you know, a wide shot of the, the laptop and having the character just doing it so you can see it happen. No, it has to cut in super close so that you can get the raw emotion of it, but it's just contrived. She made a transaction of $2,500. I know my daughter. Where were you the night my daughter went missing? I know my daughter. Look into her behavior also. She gets a fake ID. I know my daughter. This is your keychain. Oh, oh, she was my best friend. You broke his jaw. I know my daughter. I'm trying to help you find my daughter. I didn't know her. I didn't know my daughter. It's a contrived mess that has awful music throughout the whole thing is very obviously low budget and not in a charming way. And most of the performances, except for John Cho, are pretty bad. The story is also pretty bad. It's very generic and then takes a turn at the end and makes no sense and ruins any rewatchability. And the characters all suck. You don't get anyone. You don't care about anybody. Nothing really works. Everything just kind of dead ends. The whole story is red herrings that go nowhere and at, nothing happens because of them, and then the movie just is over. It's not very good. I'd give it a 4 out of 10. Don't see it. Unless you want to be mildly entertained in, for 90 minutes and then kind of annoyed in the last 10 minutes. So, that's it. Goodbye.